Hey, it's Thomas here, and welcome to another awesome edition of BRS TV Reacts, the series where I get to check out all of your currency you've got going on at home, and, you know, give you my general thoughts, maybe constructive criticism, a whole heck of a lot of praise, because you guys, you guys send in some gorgeous tanks. Anyways, this is gonna be a Facebook edition, so if you also wanna have your tank on this kind of a, a setup, this sort of show where I get to take a look at it, you can send it in through Facebook. All the instructions on how to do that are pinned at the top of the comment section down below, so check it out. But first, let's take a look at Carl Beals' tank. Oh, starting off strong. Really interesting. Okay, first off, first thing I'm gonna say, very cool shape tank. It's kind of like a, uh, uh, I don't know what you call that. I would usually say a flat back hex, but it's not like a true, it wouldn't be a true hexagon because it's, uh, it's just the corners that are cut off there on the, on the angles, on the 45s, I guess. Anyway, super, super cool. Don't get to see a lot of tanks of that shape full of coral. And this tank already looks really sweet. Diving in, huge cap. Love the underwater view. Tanks are looking beautiful. Yellow, Desjardins sailfin. Powder blue, beauty, beauty, beauty. Is that a box fish? Do you have a box fish in your reef? And look at all this coral. Nice, big, beautiful colonies. Gigantic Satosa there, really, really nice. Oh, I wish I had slightly more time to view it. Looks like a nice, uh... oh, what I thought at first was a big green SPS. Looks like it might even be a branching uh, star polyp. Oh my, lots of really nice coral. Huge purple digitata too, green digi. Got like a, a oh, just a, a huge, I think that looks like a cup coral. Pagoda, pagoda cup. Oh my, really, really nice. Oh, I wish it was only just a little longer. And I also kind of wish I, I could see what you were using for uh, filtration and stuff on this tank. It looks pretty good. I do see maybe a little bit of cyano in the substrate. It's hard to tell. Could just be reflection or something like that that I'm seeing. But if that is cyano on the substrate, not super uncommon, even in a tank that is uh, thriving and doing really well. Otherwise, I would say, though, uh, to try to take action on that sooner than later, if that is what I'm seeing. I could be wrong. Um, just so that it doesn't get out of hand. And if I am wrong, feel free to correct me on your post there. Um, I'll take a look at it. Tag me even. Really, really cool. Just gigantic mature colonies of some of the SPS there. Look really, really nice. And those fish, and that bubble coral. Is that a pearl bubble? Just a gigantic pearl bubble? Man. Nice, just big euphelia there too. Flowing in the wind. I only have two wishes. One, that I got a, a, a longer tour of the tank to see like all parts of it and, and even the filtration and stuff. And two, that I could see it in higher resolution. Oh, good work. Um, man, real nice tank. I love mature systems. Lots of fun to look at and just really satisfying, especially with, with beautiful tanks like that in there. Like that just must be so relaxing and satisfying to sit in front of. Carl Beals, thank you so much for your submission. Now we're going to check out Jordan Bernstein. Whoa, this tank is loaded. Looks like a huge torch. Oh, I wish the quality was a little bit better. Yeah, it looks like a massive torch. Just euphelia everywhere. Gold torch, hammers, branching hammers, gold hammers, cristata maybe even. Some SPS in there. Nice. Screaming yellow brain. Holy... Nice Favia or something similar in the back there. <laughs> your, uh, your angel there looks super, super happy to be in the way. Beautiful pair of clowns. Just a lot, a lot of fluorescence in this tank. Looks really, really nice. The black substrate was a cool choice. It really kind of uh, offsets all of the corals in the tank and, and kind of really helps pump up those colors and make them look really bright, especially that uh, yellow brain that's down in the corner there. It's kind of like a, I guess it might even be an orange, but that's, it's pretty close to yellow in my books. Man, looking really, really nice. That one just gigantic, what is it, like 30 or 40 heads of, uh, <laughs> of torch there are just crazy. 
Those are nice bright zoanthids as well. They look pretty sweet. Is that a potter's angel? Little potter's angel? Looking good. Just like, yo, feed me. Uh, I don't know why the camera's out, sir. Could you please, I don't know, put food in the tank for me? Thanks. This tank doesn't look like it's very big. This looks like what I would consider maybe a nano system, maybe like sub 40 gallons. It's hard for me to say for sure. And you didn't really leave me any info, so I can only guess. But it doesn't look like a massive tank, just based on like the size of the, uh, the heads of coral and the fish that are in there. You got quite a bit of rock work, but I have a feeling that one, uh, yeah, that one torch in the middle that takes up like a, a solid third of the tank, um, it's taking up most of the space. I think the rock actually dives in underneath it. So maybe there's less rock work than it appears to have, but just the sheer amount of euphelia you've got on there, it's just, yeah, there's just coral everywhere. You can't look in this tank without coral and maybe a pump that I can barely make out. It is slammed. Now it's hard to tell if it's the cameras, uh, the way the camera's picking up the blues in the tank or if the water's a little cloudy. I'm not really sure. It looks like there might be a little bit of algal film on the glass just uh, based on maybe seeing some in the reflection. Again, it could be like the UVs and lights playing tricks with the camera, but uh, perfectly clear tanks can be really nice to look at, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're, uh, you know, doing any better than a tank with a slight haze. Besides the fact that you could be feeding this tank tons based on all those LPS and uh, uh, fish that are in there. So, you know, it's hard to keep the water perfectly clear when you're pounding food in there, especially when you put a lot of uh, aminos and coral foods and stuff. That is absolutely awesome. That's a lot of fun. Kudos, uh, doing smaller tanks, assuming this is around 40-ish gallons, maybe less, um, which I could be wrong. Uh, it, it, takes, it takes a little bit extra patience and a little bit extra attention when you're dealing with such a small volume of water, especially when that water is offset by the sheer volume of coral in there. I don't know if you have a sump on this tank or if it's an all-in-one. If there's a sump, definitely makes things a little bit easier. If it's an all-in-one, it's all the more impressive. Very, very cool. And kudos on that absolutely gigantic torch colony in the center there. Just crazy fun. Jordan Bernstein, thank you for that submission. Really nice. Next up, we have Peter, and I've employed uh, Google to help me figure out how to pronounce your last name. So here we go. It's not really helping. Peter Wynack or Wynached, according to Google. I don't know, hopefully I got one of those right. Uh, let's take a look at what you got going on. Oh, starting out with the long shot down the end of the tank. Beautiful tangs. Got some trigger action in there. Got some Anthias, Cyphastria, a whack load of SPS. Lots of color, holy. I like that you're growing some of your uh, caps and stuff up against the uh, back of the tank there. It's a good place to have them. That way they can shade out the back of the tank where nothing cares. It's not gonna disrupt anything. Lots of nice zoanthids. Blonde nasos looking beautiful. Really nice fish. Rock work is great, uh, especially because you've got a lot of SPS in here and you've already got some uh, tall branching SPS that look like they're growing pretty quick on you, which is a good thing but you've got the rock work nice and low so that you've got all that upward space for them to grow. Absolutely gorgeous puffed up acans. Whatever that green thing is just screaming at you. That looks amazing. Nice chocolate or mimic tang. They've always been one of my favorites. I think they're underappreciated. I'm glad to see you've got one. People usually only like them when they're little and they haven't like started to change yet. Oh, my favorite, one of my favorite clownfishes. You got the, uh, the pink skunk clowns in there. Really, really nice. Is that a... Just an Anthias chilling out by itself underneath that hangover, overhang. Who knows if that Anthias is hungover, I don't. Nice blotched Anthias. Some more SPS on this side, just huge cap over in the back there. Shading itself out, already starting to get some white dye off underneath because it's shading itself like caps often do. Nice big colony of, uh, of pallies there or zoanthids. Nice maze brain, oh, very cool. Open brain on the bottom or Lobo, not entirely sure which. This is a great tour. I'm, I'm enjoying this big time. Looks like you even have some maybe Ponape bird's nest there or Ponape, 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 Ponape. It's a 165 gallon, so that's a pretty decent size. So much fun. Looks like Rasta's right in the front there. 
Really nice sand beds, just like perfectly white. I can see maybe you added a little bit of extra rock work. I don't know if uh, you did it um, because you were lacking rock work or if because that coral was already mounted on it, but that SPS, it looks like maybe you boosted it up just a bit from everybody else to give it a, a little bit more space to grow. Not a bad call. Cause I mean, this tank looks pretty mature. So seeing like one just white rock, it's gotta be there for a reason. Ah, I like the, uh, the euphilias you've got tucked in the back there, just behind that island, right by those clowns. I was too busy staring at the clowns the first pass through, so I didn't even notice that there were coral there. Cascading uh, purple cap or something like that down the front of the tank. Notice you got a bit of a, a white light there in the center over top of a couple of the corals, and then it's uh, a little bit bluer on the other side. I wonder what kind of lighting you're using that's given that uh, given off that effect. Nice blastos, very cool. And I dig that brain, that like maze brain you've got. Really, really cool. I don't really see any algae or pests or anemones or anything. Just colorful, beautiful coral. Whatever you're doing, you're doing, you're doing it, you're doing it well. Some MP10s or MP40s. I'm guessing MP40s or MP60s. I don't even know why I thought MP10s. It's a 165 gallon tank. A lot going on in that tank. It's very, very cool. Look how thick that trigger is. Right at the beginning, when you're like looking down the length of the tank and that trigger is just turned around and leaving, it is like, it looks like a football. That thing must eat like a little piggy. And there is like, right beside the Cyphastria, there is a blue tip acro of some kind. It looks like it's got a bit of a green body, maybe a little bit of purple in there. It's hard to say because I'm not, I can't see super well on these lower uh, res videos, but it looks really, really cool. And I kind of wish I could see it better. You gotta like reply to that post and then put like top downs of some of your favorite corals, including that SPS, cause I wanna see what it looks like. And whatever that green thing is on the bottom, that is just, it's the brightest green thing in the tank. Very cool. Oh, got an urchin in there too. Keeping things nice. Maybe that's why you've got some white rock. Who knows? I really dig uh, the rock work. I think you did a really good job of uh, basically creating a very visually interesting uh, rock shape that has a lot of depth that goes back and forth from the back of the tank to the front and kind of changes up as it goes along the tank. It's uh, visually very interesting. And uh, I really do dig that you kept it low enough that all those SPS are gonna have lots of room, especially the, that stag that's kind of on the uh, left third of the tank, which is this side for you watching, I'm thinking from my end. Uh, it, it, it was a smart choice and it, it's gonna be very, very cool to just see this giant coral like reaching up to the surface that you're gonna look through. The antheas are gonna be playing around it. You know, you're gonna see uh, some of the other reef uh, corals that you've got in there at the back of the tank through that giant stag and stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's already like full of coral, but it's going to be very, very cool once it's completely filled in and you can't really see anything because everything, the way you've got it uh, done, so you've got coral basically all the way to the front of the glass, then all the way to the back of the tank. You don't have a lot of open space in the front. So you're gonna have all these like coral colonies that you can see in the front half of the tank. And then as you look through them, you're gonna see all this reef behind it, which is gonna give it this really interesting, uh, you know, depth that we don't see a lot in uh, aquariums. A lot of people, myself included, will generally try to keep things away from the front pane. Um, so that it looks like the reef is inset in the tank a little bit. And then also off the back, you want it to look like there's glass surrounding a reef as opposed to, uh, you know, peering into a specific section of the reef where you've done it a little differently. And I think it's gonna have more of that peering into a very uh, complicated maze of coral, which is gonna be very, very interesting. I dig it. Okay. Peter, really nice tank. And reply to your post and tag me with those corals, I wanna know. I wanna know what that little SPS is. It has me intrigued. Next up, we've got a tank sent in by Dustin Wilcox. Let's take a look. Oh, right on. Right off the hop, the tank looks like it's absolutely filled with coral. Beautiful euphilias, really nice. Love the water movement in this tank, looks really, really nice. Kept all of the uh, coral and rock work off of the back panel of the tank, which is great. Really nice a can too. Nice starfish just hanging out on top of uh, is that that's either a rock of star polyps or a crystal coral. I don't know which. Galaxia. Galaxia. Definitely got some nice screaming star polyps at the pop. Beautiful bubble tips in the back there. The SPS looks really, really nice too. Lots of color. Couple of maybe tunes pumps. Clown hanging out. 
some uh, Xenia blowing in the wind next to another really nice A-can. Clown's like, get out! These are my five bubble tips, all to myself. And, yeah, like, like, like those little guys are even going to want to go in there. They would just get at. Clown's like, stay out of my bubble tips, you Chromis. I love the production value you've put into your video. The stills that go along with it. Really, really nice. Great, great little group of uh, A-cans. Like all the A-cans I've seen so far, really, really cool. Really nice uh, colors and patterns to them. This is another one of those tanks that just, like, it must be really nice to just hang out in front of it and just watch everything happening. Oh yeah, little yellow watchman, giving the what's up. Really, really cool. I'm gonna have to take another look at this. That looks like it might be a Red Sea Max, like the smaller of the Red Sea Maxes, which isn't a massive tank. So again, it's a, a smaller tank and, and smaller tanks are just harder. So I always have a, an appreciation for uh, those smaller tanks. Definitely don't make any, uh, doesn't make life any easier to have less water volume. Very, very nice. I, I don't see a lot of algae in the tank. The only real algae that I can see is behind the rockwork on the back panel. And it's just that really short kind of filmy turf algae, the green stuff that builds up on the front of the glass. If you don't wipe it off all the time, you have some of that on the back of the glass. Like, what am I gonna do? I bet you it's pretty hard to get back there with anything with all that awesome coral in the way. Besides, you got enough flow back there, um, just based on the fact that you can see behind it, like the rockwork basically all the way through, which is great for, uh, for flow. Your euphilia colonies are really nice. And the anemones, they're not so bad either. Really, really nice. Now, I don't know if you found this, but for those watching, like I, I, people tend to ask how you get your bubble tips and stuff uh, to split. Quadricolor, like bubble tips in general, people always want to know how you get them to split because some people have a lot of luck having them split over and over and over. And in my experience, which may be different from yours, so you should let us know uh, on your post there down below what you think causes your bubble tips to split so nicely. But for me, it was always large water changes. All I would do is like a big water change, no temperature difference or anything. Like I would always do my best to make sure the water was identical, less, you know, and having uh, less nutrients. But every time I did a big water change, they'd split like clockwork. So maybe that's what uh, happens for you too. But for those wondering how you get that to happen, uh, how you get those bubble tips to do that for you, that's how I did it. Um, but I would be curious, uh, Dustin, to know how you did it because those are good looking bubble tips. And I love, by the way, your substrate is immaculate. So either you've got uh, that sand sifting starfish doing 99.9% .9 of the work and you just like sit back and relax or the combination of that starfish along with uh, a little bit of elbow grease and siphoning that substrate once in a while is doing a really, really good job because it looks phenomenal. It looks like probably the day you put it in the exact same, which is not the easiest thing to accomplish, truthfully. Keeping substrate white is a battle. It takes a lot of dedication and effort. I'm just having a good time watching this tank over and over. Dustin, excellent work. Beauty of a tank. Are you upgrading soon? Or is this, is this it? You're happy? You're happy or you're going bigger? Do you need more space for, for more coral? Does that afflict you? Is that the same? We all have that problem, but are, are, you, up, are, you, are you gonna do it? Let me know. All right, so next up we've got James Griffiths. Let's take a look. Nice, that's a whiter color temperature in the tank. Not as blue, so I don't know if you're using a lens to help uh, cut the blue out or what you did, but looking really cool. Looking good. Oh, got a, is that an angel or a butterfly? I don't even know. Beautiful group of Anthias. Squampinius? Squampinus? Squam? Squam something. Oh, little Crocia. Just chilling on the floor there. A little bit of cyan, a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So this view of the tank is really, really interesting. So one, I like it because I get to see a little bit of the equipment you've got in the tank in terms of what you're using for flow. Uh, looks like you got a couple of gyre style pumps in there um, and then a more traditional one on the back. But uh, the Antheas, for whatever reason in this tank are, are basically, you've got enough of them and they're kind of schooling perfectly over top of the reef, which is lower down, you have all that open space in the center of the tank, that it reminds me very much, very, very much of uh, the photos and videos you see of Antheus on a reef, because they're always like in this ball just above the reef as opposed to like deep in it. And I can see you've got a mixed reef here. You've got a bunch of softies, some leathers and stuff. You've got a, a little bit of SPS going on, a couple of frags, got some LPS in there too. Uh, really nice looking torch here, some zoanthids, lots of coralline growing. 
little bit of red turf algae maybe, maybe a little bit of bubble algae going on. But you do have the tan gang in there. You got a scopus, a yellow, and a blue. And that uh, cap that's on the top there is scrolling very, very nicely. Very attractive. And, and you know what? I can really appreciate your approach to uh, escaping this tank. Um, the cool thing about those caps is over time, they get taller and taller and taller. They do grow outwards a lot first, but um, they will like continue to grow down and you can kind of just boost them up and lift them up and you'll create this almost like Christmas tree shaped scrolling coral all the way down to the bottom which will be really nice when you have that much empty space around the tank. Uh, a, they're not gonna be shadowing anything, so you can really let them go crazy and not feel bad about it and not worry about them uh, you know, dis uh, disturbing the other corals. And it's gonna be really cool to see that ball of Antheus just grouping over top of this reef. Lots and lots of fun. You do have just the slightest bit of uh, extra algae on the surfaces and stuff, but I wouldn't say it's growing out of control at all. But I would take a look at, um, your nutrient removal methods, whatever it is you're doing for phosphate, nitrate, et cetera, just to make sure that um, it doesn't get a chance to get out of hand. It's funny how sometimes uh, your aquascape, just in general, um, really affects how your fish behave. Uh, when you give them certain amount of space, they react differently. So I've seen uh, like Antheus in groups in tanks that have a lot of rock work or a lot of coral and not a lot of open space and they tend to act differently. Um, so I'm used to seeing Antheus a little bit more spread out and kind of around the coral, probably because I'm used to seeing a lot of tanks where you've got coral top to bottom in the tank. There isn't really any headroom. So you've got your SPS um, growing all over the rock where it can allow it to grow right to the surface. And then the Antheus are generally just in front of it. And it kind of sets the mood a little bit differently. And it seems to, uh, have them react a little bit differently because they're kind of surrounded by coral and stuff versus when they have all that open space over top of the reef and then that's where they naturally want to hang out just in that big open space above and then they dive into the coral if they think you know predators are coming and stuff they'll get closer to the reef so it's really cool just to see how fish react differently in those situations a treat i think i don't think people um really often think about how the rock works and, and coral structure in the tank is going to affect how the fish behave and yeah it's cool to see it in action. Good work. Check out that algae though. Make sure it doesn't get out. Give it a, give it a, give it a good old slap. Be like, hey algae. You know, whether it's uh, stepping up your nutrient control a bit or uh, maybe trying something like KZ or uh, Waste Away Gel from Dr. Tim's. Um, KZ CyanoClean type uh, product, uh, Vibrant may even help with that over time. I don't know what you're using for uh, nutrient removal currently, but I think that would probably be a pretty good one for the Dr. Tim's Waste Away Gel. You kind of just stick it in the sump or in the tank and it just does its thing on its own and you think about it once a month, it's no big deal. Thank you so much for sending in your tanks. They are an absolute pleasure to take a look at. And for all of you watching, thanks for joining us on this awesome journey of your aquariums. If you want your tanks to be seen on this show, well, all you gotta do is follow that link pinned in the top of the comment section below. It'll tell you exactly how you can do that through Facebook. So yeah, we can have a peek and then we can all enjoy all of our tanks all together right here and also right here. These are some of the past episodes if you wanna take a look. All kinds of tanks, really, really cool. It's super interesting to see how different everybody reefs and how, how many things are actually similar. It's very cool. Yeah, check it out.